Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the EVAP canister vent purge valve on your 7th generation Honda Civic covering models years 2001 through 2005. A link to all the tools as well as the parts used in this video are linked in the description below. And locate the diagnostic connector, which on the 7th gen Civic is just directly behind the cup holders near the gas pedal area. I'll plug that in. And then I'm going to put my key into the ignition and turn it to run. And just let the tool link. And of course it doesn't recognize what car for some reason. So we're going to go down the menu and go Honda. Correct. And so it shows here it is a P1457. And so that is an evaporative control leakage near the EVAP canister area. It actually just tells you. Now the actual canister itself is actually located directly behind this cross member beam right here. So there's your tire, right? There's the center cross beam. And the canister is this bad boy right here. Really what this canister does is that it stores all the fuel vapor from the gas tank um, while you're driving and when you're not driving. And that's just to protect the environment. There's a single 12 millimeter bolt that goes straight up. And then when you undo that, it just pivots out and then you pull it out. So before I proceed to take this canister off, I actually sprayed a whole bunch of penetrating lube on that 12 millimeter bolt up in here and just loosen that right out. Just like that. Then there's going to be a series of hoses that you're going to have to disconnect here. Um, we'll start off here with this is the vent uh, solenoid. So we can take that out by just popping it out of the hole there, right here and on the back side. And then I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers and twist the hose back and forth to just break that seal. And uh, you wanna be careful because on these older cars, the hoses are starting to get really hard and brittle. So you may end up having to replace some of them if they actually break. So that just comes off like so shift those out of the way and then there's a connector here and you squeeze that there you go so you see there's a lot of dirt and salt and stuff here so just a little bit tight I'm gonna unclip this vent hose right here's the long one now there's another hose up on the top way up here that's actually easier to remove from that metal piece than it is trying to get up inside of here We need to take off this hose right here because this solenoid piece on the back side of the canister is not attached to the can. Break our seal. And then just pull and then unhook it off the little brackets on the can. And then to take the can out, there's a little hanging hook that goes into the back of the canister. You just have to kind of tip this down and forward towards you and then the whole thing should come out. Okay, now last hose here that has to come off is this big one right here. If you guys can see that, to get it off, you just squeeze the little tabs and it comes off. These tabs, you squeeze it and it just pops right off and it unlocks off of this nipple piece. Now this particular part is where the problem lies. This is actually the uh, vent purge solenoid. And it's a very common failure point on this particular Honda. In fact, a lot of Hondas. And the reason why it fails is there is plastic body sandwiched inside a metal bracket. And with this car, 330,000 kilometers, there's a lot of corrosion on this bracket forming. And, and so as this piece rusts, it begins to make the seal between these plastic joints fail. And that's why it doesn't hold vacuum or doesn't hold uh, tank pressure. 
And so when you order a new one from Honda, um, they're about 120 bucks for the solenoid. And I strongly encourage you guys to also order the replacement screws. Um, there are two Phillips screws that hold the solenoid. And then there's a third one here that holds onto this hose bracket. With the amount of rust that's on here, I really recommend you use something like liquid wrench penetrating lube and just spray, you know, underneath the screws and just soak these bolts down. So it's been about an hour and throughout that hour, I've continually sprayed on a bunch of penetrating lube and I've even taken a Phillips screwdriver here and I've placed it firmly into the hole and used a hammer here and just gently tapped the screw ends to loosen up the screws because what happens is that they go into some brass inserts that are molded into the body of this thing and when you tap the hammer you're basically inducing some shock to break up the rust on the threads and once you hit it a few times spray it with some more penetrating lube I'm going to use a pair of vice grips here and very carefully and don't use cheap ones by the way and we're gonna get that onto that screw and then we're just going to apply some pressure <sighs> and then we're just going to wiggle this thing back and forth several times and then applying some lube to the top side and bottom side of the bolt to really break that screw loose. And after some rocking, you can actually feel the screw really loosen up. There we go. Magic. So then to take it off, you just wobble the solenoid off and it comes off like so. That's what it looks like once the solenoid has been removed. It's just a little felt pad and they're covering the charcoal media that's on the inside. Now before we reinstall the new solenoid, I'm just going to take a whole bunch of penetrating lube here and just flush out those screw threads and make sure that there's no rust debris inside. Now you'll see that there's this last screw holding this bracket. You guys can choose to try to replace that, but if the bracket's nice and secure, there's not really a need to do so. And you actually run the risk of breaking this little wing piece off the canister, which then means you have to buy a new can. So if it ain't broke, don't mess with it. So I'm just gonna clean up as best as I can all the dirt around the area. Now this is the new part. It is a Honda 17310S5A-L31. And that's what she looks like. Nice and shiny. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of oil onto this O-ring. Just rub that on there. Then wipe off that excess. And then we're going to slide that puppy on. Like that. And then these are the new screws from the dealership. So I ordered three because I thought I was going to replace all of them, but we'll just put two in. But before that, we're going to put some anti-seize on it so that it makes re future removal much easier. Just put a blob on that. So just finger tight. There's an O-ring there on that stem, remember? So it's not going to leak anyways. Let's make sure our nipples and everything are clean. Prior to reinstallation. We just wipe this canister clean and then we reinstall it in our car. So much like how we did to the canister, we're just going to make sure that all of our connections here are clean carefully reconnect that hose we just connected earlier by snapping it in and then looking underneath the tab or the can finding where that tab goes on our canister like that and we're going to take our bolt 
fish it up into that little hole and just snug. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. This thing doesn't weigh much. We can reconnect our little electrical connector. Snap that on. Get our hose. Slide it on. And snap it into the holder. Likewise for this little guy. Slide that on. Snap it. Spring clamp thingy. Put that over the hose. You know what? We'll see if I can put that in the groove and just shove that on. Let's make sure that pushed on firmly. And there you have it. We can go ahead and reset the check engine light by turning the engine to run and then hitting erase on our tool. And it says erasing clears all DTCs. Yes. And it says erase was successful. So as you guys can see from my repair video that replacing the EVAP canister vent purge valve is neither difficult nor time consuming and can be accomplished with some basic hand tools. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.